All right, so I just thought it'd be easier if I did a video. Um, uh, so I'm just gonna look at what you got here, and then basically, eh, shoot some, shuffle some things around, and basically just try to uh, draw over top of um, what you have. So I'm just gonna use Photoshop here, uh, which I'm sure you don't mind. I'm just gonna maybe make a. Okay, I thought that that was fill shape uh, pixels. There it goes. Okay, I'm just gonna draw over top of. Uh, this area, um, and I will use, let's say, uh, black, let's see, uh, huh, okay, and control, that's plus, alright, so, um, looks pretty good, uh, the one, th uh, overall it's not bad, I wish you would have done maybe, um, I don't know if you were looking at, like, a legit skull, because it looks like you did this, uh, almost on a, um, do I have a pencil in here instead? Let's see if there's... Nah, I don't care that much. Um, but it looks like it's laying down. You know what I mean? Uh, and the same thing up here. Uh, because if you look, you can see the head's kind of facing upwards. Which kind of throws the proportions a little bit off. Um, when uh, you do things like that. Um, because this only makes sense if the head's looking up. Which most of the time, it's going to be looking straight if you're drawing it. Um, you know, usually when... If you're drawing a character or if you're animating or whenever you're viewing a person, you usually view them at eye level. It makes it more personal for the audience as well, uh, unless you're trying to shift, you know, do worm's eye or bird's eye view. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, I might, if you could, do a different angle just because this is kind of upward, uh, upward dog. Um, like this one's kind of, this one's more eye level. So, um, I'm just going to draw next to this, I guess. We'll see how well I'm doing. I should have warmed up first. Um, it's not too bad. It's a little, um, the scale seems a little bit off. But again, it's kind of hard because you did it up few. Um, but, uh, let's see. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Control. Okay. So, looking at this one here, uh, it looks a little bit wide. Um, so usually I just kind of do something like, hang on a second. Let's put these on there. That's a little better. Okay. Um, and let's take the flow down a little too, so it's not quite so. All right, that's better. Okay. Um, so when I'm looking at your skull here, it just feels a little bit... Um, a little bit uh, fat this way, okay? So I'm sure you probably remember me saying this before, but just as a reminder, um, you know, you should be able to, and I would do this while you're doing this because the whole point is to be 100% accurate. Draw a, a line down the center, right? Your median line, all right? Things towards the inside is median. Things towards the outside is lateral. Um, that's why they'll say they toward the MCL versus ACL. Um, uh, it's the medial uh, cruciate ligament versus the anterior cruciate ligament. So... Um, but medial serves the inside. So it's a good idea to just draw a straight line. It'll help keep you straight. Because if you look at yours, see how yours is a little bit crooked here. Okay? So I would draw a straight line down. And then the other thing is, I said this before, but again, it's because of the angle. Um, if you're looking at this as a box or a shape, right at the halfway mark is where the, the center of the eye should be. So they should be right here. Um, yours is a little bit high. See how much forehead you have here? It's not very much. Okay? So... Uh, even mine's a little bit high there. So more like there is where that should be. Um, and then, again, I said before, but it's one head high. One head high. Um, and then it's um, uh, three quarters head. And again, this is generic uh, uh, wide. Okay. So um, if you look at yours, um, let's just do, I got an idea. I'll do this. Um, I'm going to hold shift. Okay. So let's say we take this. Okay, and then I will command or control T. If I take this and I shift it to the side, um, and then I'll just move this. I mean, it's not terrible, but that's not three quarters. You know what I mean? That's more like seven eighths at best. So, uh, I'll just be a little bit wary of that. That's all. Okay. Um, oops, still on that. All right, and control D. All right. Um, so you did do kind of a good job here where you sort of show what we call an eminence, which basically means that it's just the areas that you tend to 
C will stick out more instead of making it in like a perfect circle. So you did pretty good with that. Um, the eye hole shape is mostly correct. It should be kind of like what you have there. The sockets. Okay, so they should be. And again, that varies. Um, the nose is, is pretty okay. The zygomatic arch is not too bad. Um, so the rest of it's okay. It's more just the way that it's kind of stretched. Um, the ramus of the jaw here, this little part that sticks out looks a little bit weird. Um, it does have a sometimes like a little bit of a pointiness, but yours feels a little a little more than maybe it should be. Um, but yeah, so anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, those would be my main things with that. It's just, I mean, the whole point is to generally get proportions. This one's a lot better. Um, and again, if I took this, let me take your drawing here. I'm just going to uh, duplicate it and um, take this and we'll just, I'm just going to rotate it so that it's more like that. Okay. And doink. And, okay. If you take it more like that, um, this is actually much better. So I'm actually going to go ahead and draw a, well, no, I won't draw a box. Let's see. Um but this actually makes a lot more sense. So again, if we drew this as a box, which is good, because if you take the nose off, just like you have here, um, it would be more or less flat. Okay, so that's all pretty good. The side view is not bad at all. Um, and then right about the halfway mark uh, is where the eye should be. So this is a little bit off. It probably should be a little bit lower. The auditory canal is roughly in the right spot because that's where the, the uh, again, the, the mandible comes up into and that's where the ear goes. So this actually part right here is really drawn nicely. Um, I don't really have too many too many arguments with that because you had the jaw come in and up and that's basically right where this half line should be. So that's pretty good. Um, and again, you did a good point of trying to, you know, keep that structurally pretty good. So I, I don't have any major issues um, with this, you know. Um, all right, let's look at the three quarters one. The three quarters. So this one to me by far is like the most successful. This one right here, this one like pretty much works. Um, the three quarters one's a little rougher. Uh, to me, it looks kind of odd because again, um, it doesn't look like he's at an upward angle. Um, so, but it's three quarters is obviously a little bit harder to, to draw. Um, but again, whenever you're drawing these things, the best way to, because inevitably what you need to do is you're going to have to be able to make your own like um, maquette that you can just kind of reproduce. So it's always good to use these center lines and like eye lines. Um, the reason being is that if I need to turn this head, right, I got to turn it so he's looking up. I could just put that eye line up and then, you know, I, I staple, uh, they, they call it anchor points, but I will anchor my objects onto these. And if he's got to look down, I can have them look, or like mostly down into the side here, right? So I can have these lines, and again, I can just have the nose come there, and the eyes go there, and it's very, e you know, there's the mouth, the mouth would be underneath here, uh, but it's very easy to basically um, move it around by using these center lines, so, which you kind of did here, so that's not too bad, but the, the eye line's missing, so I would um, make sure you're, you're paying attention to that. Plus, it's a little bit easier, um, oh, crap, eh. Now I'm regretting it. Oh, content aware? Sure, why not? That seems to work. Ah, God bless it. Cancel. I don't care. Ah. Okay, let's just get rid of that. and I'll just use an eraser. Like a normal human being. Let's see, make that bigger. Okay, back to the brush. Where are you at? Okay. Um... But you can see like this looks like it's protruding out a little bit more maybe than it should. Um, so uh, again, keep those center lines, use that eye line. Um, and then you can use that to kind of guide some of the other stuff. And then if you can also do an ear line, that helps too. So if I imagine that there's this line that goes here, that'll tell me where the jaw should go in, right? And then I can kind of um, from there determine you know, where the, the jaw would go up, up in here. <laughs> um, and then that's obviously the ear would come off of that. But, um, I would say like, this is just, there's not a lot of space right here. This, uh, this part needs to come down more. Um, 
but there's some nice line quality and stuff. This also is getting a little bit weird, but I'm not sure 100%. You're going to find that the three cores view generally is usually like the hardest to draw. Um, but I mean, this just I feel like some of this could just be a little bit stronger. Um, one of the things you got to do when you're doing designs, if possible, is you want to use not all curves and not all straights. Um, because if it's all curves, it kind of loses strength. Right. So like, let's say I'm drawing an arm. Right. And I draw the arm all as like as like these curves. OK. You know, and this is mostly correct. So let's just say I'll draw something like that. Right. And there's an elbow. Um, but it's not very strong. OK. Now, let's say I do that arm again. I'll just make another uh, turn this one off. I draw that arm again and. Hey, um, G. There we go. Uh, I draw that arm again. And uh, this time I just draw all as like straights. Right? It's going to have a lot of strength. Um, but there's no like subtlety and it, it looks unnatural and it feels incohesive. Now, the best way to do it is to try to use a little bit of both. So you would like, you know, maybe start with a straight and then come down a curve. It doesn't even matter what order you use them then go like a straight then maybe like a curve here to like a straight and then we can kind of do a straight here um to an elbow and then maybe like a curve to a straight here and then down there um but you get a lot more strength and it looks a lot more structural you know so like that kind of a thing um it's a lot more structural and a lot better than something that's either just all curves okay or something that's all straights um this will feel a little sausage and loose and you know uh this is just too much but if you want to try and use a little bit both and just use very direct obvious lines um every line that you make is like one sentence right and you need a bunch of sentences to create a paragraph right and then you, each one of these would make uh oops uh a whole story so nah, that's not what i wanted either uh window arrange all the taps um wouldn't pick all of those uh anyway so boop boop um, so with this, it feels a little bit like a little loose because see how this is just round. If you had, you know, again, it's one of the reasons to use those eminences. If you had just kind of strengthened it with lines, you, it'll, it'll be a little bit, you know, these straight lines, it'll be a little bit more, it'll have a little more strength to it, you know? Um, and you want to use them, you know, uh, together, you know, cohesively. Now you might use more or less depending on what you're drawing. Um, but yeah, so I would just tell you to, where possible, try to stick a couple of those in there as well, you know, and then kind of a thing. But uh, but yeah, not too bad. All right, so what I would tell you to do um, for next time is this. You should um, work on the axial skeleton. So hang on a second. All right, so this is just, um, if you wanted this, uh, teach me cone. Uh, class number two under VCP 215 or 219. It's kind of similar to what we did in there, um, but I do I do ZBrush in this class. So um, you can kind of skip to the... Okay, so like this is the skull or whatever. Um, but the axial skeleton would more or less be... Uh, it, the skull is part of it, uh, but it would be the uh, the costal region, the, the spine basically to the hips. Okay, so um, you don't have to use this as a... You can look at this if you want, but... Um, I'd like you to do basically that. So not, uh, so this is called the, the axial. Um, and then the, uh, other part, the, the limbs are appendicular. Okay. So, but I would like you to do maybe is the, the spine and, um, uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the rib cage and spine and the hips, the hips are going to be really tough. I would, uh, you're going to need a lot of reference to do that. Um, this isn't too bad. Um, just again, one of the things you want to do when you're looking at it is don't make it a perfect circle. Try to find those lines. Like here you can see if you're looking from above, this is the spine here, and this would be where the sternum is. You can see the rib cage is actually very angled, and if you feel, you can tell. I mean, it's kind of round, but it's kind of not, okay? And even when you look at the way that they're bent, they have lines in them, all right? Uh, so that's what I want you to do. Work on that and the, the hips, basically. All right, and that would be it. So good luck. Keep going.